Hey everyone, Dave here again. This so uh, many lectures on formula and molecular masses. Uh, I'm just going to get uh, straight into it. All right, so just a little bit of uh, clarification of terminology. When I use the term mass, what I'm talking about is how heavy something is. Technically, in science, uh, mass represents the amount of stuff in something, and you can use units like kilograms or grams or whatever. Uh, that's different to weight, which is actually a measure of the uh, force of gravity. But we're not going to worry about that. This is about mass. Okay. All right. Um, now, the next point I want to make to you, um, which you already know, of course, is that covalent compounds uh, often exist as these things we call molecules. So they're discrete, distinct entities. You'll need to know that because I'm going to make a distinction between uh, molecular mass and formula mass, and you'll see what I mean as I go on through this lecture. So when I'm talking about a particular compound that's covalent, and I'm thinking about the fact that it's normally made of uh, molecules, then I can refer to it as having a particular mass. But rather than saying, you know, what's the mass of this molecule, what I do is I say, well, I'm referring to its molecular mass, so it's just um, it's just the way in which I'm using the words. Can I calculate molecular mass? Well, yes, I can. This is an example here, and there's a lot here, but I'm just going to very um, reasonably quickly work, walk you through it. Um, the way in which you... So the example we've got is... Um, calculate the molecular mass of uh, carbon monoxide. So in other words, we're asking the question, how much does one molecule of carbon monoxide weigh? Now, it just so happens that we have the information at hand to be able to carry out the calculation to work out the answer to this. So obviously, if I wanted to, and you can ignore this for a moment, if I wanted to, for example, work out the mass of uh, something, like I just draw a thing here, but it's consisting of two components, right? Rather than work out the whole of the mass by weighing it, if I told you that this weighed four kilos, and this weighed five kilos, or kilograms, I should say, you know that the total weight of that thing is going to be nine kilograms. So similarly, if I look at a, a compound like carbon monoxide, if I know how much one carbon atom weighs, and I know how much one oxygen atom weighs, I can just simply add the two masses together to calculate the uh, molecular mass of the carbon monoxide molecule. And we can look up that information for the uh, masses of these elements. Um, they, they can exist in tables, um, but um, special tables, but um, they also are often written in uh, periodic tables. And whichever periodic table you're using, if you look at the key there, there should be uh, something referring to in the key uh, a thing called atomic mass. So when I'm looking at one atom here of carbon, I want to know what its atomic mass is. And one atom of oxygen, I want to know what its atomic mass is. If I know what they are, I can add them up. And then, of course, I can get the total mass for the whole carbon monoxide molecule. Well, when you look them up, what you'll find is that um, carbon has an atomic mass of 12. And I'll talk about the units emitted in a moment. And oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. Now, when you look it up, it might be that the atomic mass is expressed to one decimal place or two decimal places or even more decimal places. For all intents and purposes, uh, I don't really care. If you had uh, a question in an exam about this, I'm just assuming that you uh, have looked up the mass just even to the units value is normally sufficient because that's not the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is you showing me that you know how to actually do the calculations. The example I've given down here, I've got that the atomic mass of carbon is actually 12.01 and oxygen 16.00, but I'm just going to use unit values for the purposes of explanation. That'll be good enough. 
All right, now the other thing that I need to point out to you is the units, or the unit, and the unit is called an AMU, which is short for Atomic Mass Unit. That has an equivalent mass in grams, but you can imagine that that mass is extremely small. So rather than use grams, uh, we use this very, very small unit of mass called the Atomic Mass Unit. I really don't have time to go into uh, how that's calculated, but just uh, just uh, be aware that uh, it can obviously be calculated and that it's very, very much smaller than the unit of mass called the gram. So up here, to get this technically correct then, let's write this as 12 AMU and 16 AMU. Okay, so what you do is you just add the two together and of course you end up with 28. I've done it down here with more decimal places, but as I said, I don't really care. And of course this is 12, this isn't quite right here of course, this should be A, M, U plus 16 A, M, U equals 28.01 AMU, atomic mass unit. So by doing this you can calculate the molecular mass of any molecule you wish. You just need a periodic table to uh, look up what the uh, atomic masses of the respective uh, atoms are that make up that particular molecule. Okay, now the next concept I want to talk to you about is formula mass, right? I put slash weight in there because it's just a little reminder for me to tell you that sometimes people use the term weight when they're talking about molecular weight and formula uh, weight rather than using the term mass. I just prefer to use the term mass. I think it's a, a more appropriate term. Anyway, when you're talking about ionic compounds, you know full well that these ionic compounds are not made out of molecules. They form, you know, for example, sodium chloride's got sodium ions positively charged, chloride ions negatively charged, and they form that lattice structure. There's nowhere in there can you say there's an independent unit called a sodium chloride. You can't do that like you can with saying, okay, this is a water molecule, this is a hydrogen gas molecule, etc. So there's no such thing as a molecule when you're thinking about ionic compounds. So to use the term molecular mass for ionic compounds would be a misnomer, it would be inappropriate. But what we can do, of course, is use the term formula mass, which is just the formula of the ionic compound. So sodium chloride which is the smallest formula unit you can get, is NaCl. So just a little bit of a distinction there. There's really not that much difference, but in terms of calculating formula mass, it's going to be precisely the same as when you calculate uh, molecular mass. All right, so here's an example here. Uh, calculating formula mass. Um, oh, yeah, here's a l nice little note in here I just put in. Um, the, the atomic mass unit is actually defined, now you don't have to know any of this, but I'm just showing you just for sake of interest, as one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. That's the isotope 12 of carbon. So that's a very small mass. It's about 10 to the minus 24 of a gram. I mean, we can't even imagine how small that is, but oddly enough, we can calculate it. So you can see why we have to use uh, AMUs. Okay, so... Here's an example of a question. What is the formula mass of sodium chloride? If I asked you the question, what's the molecular mass of sodium chloride, I'd be incorrect in the way in which I've formulated the question because sodium chloride is an ionic compound, therefore there are no molecules. How do you do it? Exactly the same as the other way with molecular mass. So you look up the atomic mass of sodium. You know that that's the, that's the formula. So you have one sodium, one chlorine. The atomic mass of sodium is that much. I would have written that as 23 AMUs. The atomic mass of chlorine is that much, 35.45. I think in this case I would have made this 22.0 and 35.5 AMUs just to keep all the decimal places consistent. And then you've got one of each, so you simply add the two together. There they are. 
So the formula mass for sodium chloride is that amount. And again, that equation isn't technically correct. That's rather naughty of me. That should be a m u. Oh, that's terrible. A m u. So it's 22.99 AMU plus 35.45 AMU equals 58.44 AMU. All right, that's uh, the mini lecture in relation to uh, molecular and formula mass.